welcome to Baking with Ned. Baking bread. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you doing uh, in this crazy time? I'm good. I'm hanging in there. I'm Ron. I'm one of the Bread Lounge team members. Well, I'm very excited to chat with you and a little bit of background of what I've been doing. I'm trying to bake sourdough from scratch. Oh, yeah. It is. It smells a little nasty. And I've tried to bake it a couple times, but it's not working out so well. I feel really sad about this. This is embarrassing. This is one of the worst loaves I've ever baked. It came out like very flat. It came out like flat. this, this big. So sourdough is basically dough that's made with natural yeast. We have two types of bacteria in the starter. Mm -hmm. uh, one giving it the sour flavor, that's why it's called sourdough. Mm. And the other one, acts like as the yeast and it gives the, the volume to the loaf. So if you have too much of the one bacteria, let's say the sour one, but not enough of the yeasty bacteria, it will be very sour, but it will come out very flat. And how do you create that balance? If the starter is good and healthy and nice bubbles, you're gonna get a really nice loaf. Now it's time to make our sourdough starter. Here I'm going to mix, uh, this is my 50-50 wheat flour and all-purpose flour. I'm gonna add 200 grams of that to the bowl. And now I'm gonna add 200 grams of my warm water. So at the end, you should have a kind of a mushy, almost like a thick soup, like porridge. And you let it sit with a covering. Here we go, covered with saran wrap now. You want the starter to be bubbly. Uh-huh. And after, let's say, 10, 12 hours from now, if it's not, you want to feed it again with flour and water. You know, what we'll do right now, Wes, is called feeding the sourdough. So we're gonna take our sourdough, gonna throw away most of it, like 80%. Now to the remainder, we'll add more flour, which is like our fuel. The flour is a half whole wheat and bread flour mix. And then the flour water ratio is one to one by weight. All right, so now we're gonna mix it all together. Oh wow, we have flour everywhere now. Usually it takes about a week or two of refreshing it mm. just to get the right flavor and balance. Bigger bubbles you have, healthier it is. Really? So I'm looking so for like monster it, bubbles, just like big old, not big monster, bubbles. Not monster, let's say quarter inch, oh, you're wow. getting there. If the starter is not ready, nothing gonna come out even if you do all the other steps properly. Good morning, we're back, it's day seven. All right, I'm gonna check on my sourdough starter, see how it's doing. Seven days in, I mean, it should really be getting nice and stanky. Okay, okay, I definitely feel some stank. Let's see if it passes the float test. Oh, oh, it's not floating at all. What am I doing wrong? There's just no floating here. So do people ever do half sourdough starter and half uh, like store-bought yeast? Yeah, you can mix it. It will help it get the volume and looks nice and you'll still get the sourdough flavor. Is putting in commercial yeast cheating? No, I don't think it's cheating. Okay. There's no cheating. You wanna get good. a nice loaf of bread and uh, right. it's all good. At the end of the day, if it helps you make bread, there's nothing cheating about it. No. All right, this is the ultimate lazy boy recipe. This is what we're gonna do. 350 grams of water. We're gonna add our salt now. Do you wanna taste some salt? Salt is very, very good. Here you go. And mix it all together. What are some typical like percentages for how much water to put in, how much flour to put in? Uh, it can be anywhere from 50% to 60 to 70 to 80% hydration, meaning percentage of the water from the total weight of dough. I recommend 
to beginner to people that just start baking at home especially mm -hmm. not to start with high hydration it's just harder to work with also hydration doesn't make the bread better necessarily it's just a matter of preference more salt, more salt. <laughs> This is yeast. This is not for babies. So if you're mixing sourdough starter and store-bought yeast, you want to only put like a little bit, like a half teaspoon or a teaspoon of store-bought yeast? Even le less than half. Even less. Less than a quarter of a teaspoon of oh, wow. commercial yeast. Because too much commercial yeast will just kill the sourdough yeast. Swirl that around. <laughs> then, one quarter cup Baby! of the sourdough starter. You're not gonna get much yeast from it, but you might get some flavor. And then, 450 grams of flour and 50 grams of whole wheat flour. And there you go. Check this out. This is Lazy Boy Pseudo Sourdough Bread. Like how long do I want to let it rise for? What am I looking for when it's rising? After you take it out of the mixer, you're going to put it in a container with the lid, you're going to cover it. And you basically want it to double its size. Another way to know if it's ready or not is with your finger to punch the dough on the top. If you press it gently and it leaves a strong mark, that means it's already overproof. Okay. Now, if the dough springs back and there's no sign of your finger on the dough, that means it still has a lot of power and needs more time to rise. I've been in the middle of making this one. Press with your finger so I can see. Yeah, this is all, that's too, it's been sitting for too long. Oh man. Things have really not been going well on the sourdough journey, but look at this. Oh yes, that's bubbly. This doesn't float. I, I'm just gonna go to Panera. Hmm. Not gonna lie, I was expecting that to float. So here is the status of the bread after two hours of rising. Hardly anything. Really not getting a ton of rising here, so. <sighs> I feel like I failed. Do people ever uh, proof their bread in the oven with the oven off? If your room is very cold, mm -hmm. you can do that. But you don't want the, the, the oven to be too hot because then you'll cook the dough when it's raw. Uh, so we had a little bit of a miscommunication on the bread front uh, between me and uh, Ariel. You see, what had happened was I put the bread in the oven uh, when it wasn't hot just to proof it, give it a nice stable environment. But then my wife didn't know that and she started preheating the oven to cook broccoli and this is the result. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Communication problems. <laughs> That's the biggest problem we all have. I should have left a note. It was supposed to be a video about me teaching everyone to bake bread, and it's actually a, a, some of my lowest, worst bread moments, which really just shows that baking bread is a journey, and everyone's on that journey at a different stage. You can go forward, you can go backwards. You're just, you know, where you are, where you are, and that's okay. And right now, this is where I am. So today, I'm going to take my bread to the next level and make it with sourdough. Ariel just wants me to make my normal yeasted <laughs> bread. Can you just make regular bread? <laughs> I need something edible. <laughs> why, why don't you want the sourdough journey anymore? getting dire over here from the people. We really have to get this right. We have to get this right. Well, let's check in on Sven, the sourdough starter. How's he doing? Oh, he's getting bubbly. Now this is great. This is what I need to use to bake my bread. Yeah, yeah, that's floating. Yeah. sourdough starter, it's floating pretty nicely. We're gonna go for it. 400 grams of 
bread flour or all-purpose flour, 50 grams of spelt, 50 grams of whole wheat flour. You combine it all together with your hands. This is the most fun part. So you're gonna remove the cover. It should have uh, solidified a little bit. And now you're gonna add the salt and your 50 extra grams of water. And then you're gonna combine it all together, kind of squeeze it together with your thumbs in the dough so that the whole dough gets the salt incorporated. Now, from this point forward, you're not gonna to wanna to work the dough as much. Now it's time for the bulk fermentation. You're gonna to wanna to watch over it and give it a turn every 30 minutes by pulling up the bottom of the dough and flipping it over itself. Doing that develops tension in the dough. When it bakes, it's gonna be a nice round shape and it's gonna rise really well. After about three to four hours or when it doubles in size and passes the poke test, then it's ready to shape. We tilt it out, boom. Now at this point, you wanna really not work it as much as you can. Scoop it, flip it, scoop it, flip it. Kind of scoop it around and make a little ball out of it. Put out a little blankie and let it rest for some more. Oh yes. So my bread has been proofing all afternoon. Let's check it out. Oh, look at that, I gotta say. I really like how this has turned out. There's a sweet smell that's coming off of it, so I've got some sourdough flavor, but not too much. Now let's talk about like shaping. When you shape it, sometimes the dough has a lot of air in it. So when you shape, you wanna get rid of the big bubbles. Mm. The big bubbles just gonna be holes in the middle of the loaf. All right, so the last step is to shape the loaf. Take it up, flip it over, and then perform a series of folds. Like that, and the last fold, like so, and just kind of like button it into a little. Oh yes, that's so smooth, so round, so pure. Oh, is this is a thumbnail. What a perfect little nugget. Okay, I've got my bread basket here with plenty of flour. Scoop. So I've shaped my loaves, now I've put them in the basket and then goes for like another couple of hours. So here again, you want it to double in size. Really? And huh. this is where you can control the process. So let's say it's nine, nine at night now, yeah. nine in the evening, you're already tired, you just shaped your loaf, you're like, okay, now I have to wait until about 11, put it in the oven and then I have to bake it, I'm too tired, I don't wanna deal with it today, no problem. You put it in the refrigerator, you go to sleep, huh. the, the, you know, the cold, coldness in the refrigerator won't let the yeast keep on working, so it will stay the way it is. So basically putting it in their fridge is like hitting pause. Yeah, and then instead of being ready after two hours, because it came out from the refrigerator, it will take you three or four hours. Again, depends how cold is your refrigerator and how cold is the room. Wow. Now I'm gonna let this proof in the basket for an additional three hours, then put it in the refrigerator overnight, and then tomorrow morning, we'll bake delicious, fresh sourdough that I made myself on the counter here almost two weeks later. Good morning, this is my sourdough ready to go into the oven. It has been sitting in the refrigerator all night. So for baking it, I have been using a big cast iron pot. And I read somewhere that you, you're supposed to keep the lid on to like help develop steam or something. Like what are some tips you have for actually baking the bread? So the cast iron, it's better for dough with a lot of uh, hydration. Mm. Okay. But it also keep the shape. Mm -hmm. Because if it's too wet, it's just gonna be flat and as you put it on, open surface. But if your dough is not as wet, you don't necessarily need the cast iron. So you want to put it in the oven before you start heating it. Put the cast iron in ahead of time, preheat the whole thing, then put the bread in. Yeah. I've been preheating my cast iron pot. That's all nice and toasty. Oh yeah, it came right out. All right, I get myself a nice box cut here to help the steam expand properly. Ooh, and you can see on the inside, check it out. You can see there's like a good amount of like 
uh, rising and bubbling there. Let's do this. Ned time, bread time! I don't think you're ready for this bread. All right. And I'll take back down to 450. Set the timers. And then what should I look for when it comes out of the oven? Like when is it done? The best way to look is at the color. If it has a nice color, brown color, some people like it darker than others, but mm -hmm. the color is a good sign. So it can be but anywhere from golden brown to like kind of nutty, nutty brown. Yeah. All right, it's all done. Let's check it out. Oh my goodness, what? What? That is bread. Here it is, my final sourdough loaf. I feel very accomplished. This, <laughs> this is very pretty. It's beautiful. All right, here we go. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, it has a, a nice brown crust that was very crunchy. It's a little sour, but not too sour. I'm I'm pretty oh, pleased yeah. with how it turned out. Very nice. You are officially a professional baker. Well, thank you. <laughs> oh my goodness, wow. Well, I, I can't wait to continue this journey. And thank you so much for all of your help. You're welcome. And come to our bakery and get a loaf of bread. I will, I will. Thank you so much. Mmm. Mmm, just like a, a rich, Sourdough flavor. It's very good. Good bread. Good bread. Good bread. We're baking bread, but Wes has commandeered my bowl. <laughs> bowl.